best wishes to all you Baylors. Swoop into the Stinky Dragon, drink up our latest Java, all fun and flames. It's a mixture of freshly peeled flesh, lemons and oranges work too, a claw full of cloves, lightly roasted claret coffer topped with a dash of unholy water. One mouthful of this mug is enough to bring you back from the throes of an exploding death, which would have caused 20d6 fire damage. Half if you saved. Previously, our adventurers said farewell to a heroic friend, found an entombed alchemist, sailed and shopped with Captain Kirk, and now finally have a good look at Glurb. Latch onto a libation. Let's leap into this leaky lore. Hello, everyone. I'm Gustavo Sorolla. I'm your dungeon master for our putrid party. Before we get started, I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. <laughs> Down the ground! Before you get to the arrow, blur a garble. Blur a garble. This week's role playing warm up question is What is one thing guaranteed to scare your characters so terribly that their first instinct is to immediately run away? Mm. Oh, what, life. Their, life deepest, itself. their deepest, darkest fears. Ooh. <laughs> oh. I, I, I Student got loans. You got fears? I have many fears. You have many fears? Actually, I only have this one. Hey there, it's Chip Haney. <laughs> I know I make a lot of laughs, I make a lot of goofs but I'm going to talk to you about something real serious. I've seen a lot of murder. I've seen a lot of killing, but the one thing I'll run away from high blood pressure, carbon monoxide, oh. Oh. silent oh. killer. <laughs> uh, I, so, Hey, Chip Haney, volunteer firefighter. Uh, make sure you oh. check all of your, all of your magical smoke detectors and, and fill those batteries. In D and D, smoke detectors are just mythits that hover yeah, at the top of your yeah. color picture. And they then go, whenever ah! they die, yeah. you're like, Oh no. Yeah. 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 Or the when they're hungry, they go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then you can't yeah. find him in the house at long intervals. And what was your name? He said your painting. No, what's his real name? Oh, oh yeah. uh, <laughs> no, you. What's your oh, name? Blaine <laughs> Gibson. <laughs> Blaine looked at his phone. <laughs> well, I keep my ID and my phone to remember my name. And what level and class is Chip Haney in race? T uh, uh, tiefling Rogue Five. Road five, standing by. <laughs> I feel like this is a good point to inform the audience we have not recorded any episodes with us for a few weeks. It's been almost a month. It's, it's, been, yeah. it's less it's about been. that and it's more about Baldur's Gate. I'm so Coach Gibson, my Baldur's Gate character. Oh. I am him now. So oh. I gotta like pull <laughs> Chip back from the darkness. Yeah. They uh, uh, uh particularly Barbara Chris and Blaine have been neck deep in Stinky Dragon Adventures, and so we had to take a little bit of a Recording break, but we're going to be recording nonstop a bunch of D and D today. So, oh yeah, very excited about oh, it. Oh, we're, yeah. we're recording uh, not only Sticky Dragon, but our bonus show yep. uh, Second Win. So, if you're a first member on Rich Teeth, you can check that out for a little peek behind the scenes about what's going on with the show. We are D and D machines yeah. today. I'm going to be taking notes during these episodes of things to talk about in Second Win. Dang it, I forgot my notebook. <laughs> You've got a tablet you right in front digital, of you. You have no, a thing my, that holds my notes pad. infinite notes the right in front of you. Previous episodes, though. I know. Who, oh. who else is here? Uh, uh, I'm here. I I'm Barbara Dunkelman, and I play Elga Von Brath, the female half-elf vampire barbarian, also level five. What? Ooh. Yeah. You got to be level five, too? Are we not all level <laughs> We all level up. Too. I, was <laughs> I was like, did we level up more than you? I'm sorry. And I think, you know, Elga is really not afraid of a lot of things. You know, she's very brave, but I think if a school bus full of... Uh, Toddlers and little babies mm. pull up. She's gonna run far away. Uh, <laughs> Wait, why? She does not like little children. <laughs> They're snotty. They smell bad. They poop poop in the diapers poop, poop. and they uh, they <laughs> cry a lot. They make noise. They probably are too familiar with Elga as well. They probably think Elga's also one of them. Yeah, and Elga's Elga's she's beyond that. Just so over it. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I expected. That's fun. Uh, I'm Chris Damaris, and I play. Farney, Farney. Farney. <laughs> oh, he's got a little pepper to step today. Yeah, is he, uh, he going to sing a song for us? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Farney, level five Farney. human cleric. Barney's. <clears throat> Guys, can you curse Barney today to have to sing everything? I, I feel like he's got one of those little uh, like tuning things you yeah. blow to. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's like trying to find his, uh, his correct pitch for his name. Yeah. His greatest fear are uh, the things that make him want to run away from anything are his failures. Oh. oh, some wisdom from an old <laughs> man. He, there's a lot of things that he's failed, his failures, and he's 
Is Barney yeah. falling asleep? <laughs> 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 I think, hey, can, you, Blaine, can you wake up, Barney? Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, that's just one way of running away from things. People have been debating whether or not Chris is like a robot or an alien for years, and I think the robot theory is actually falling through right now. He just hasn't powering charged. Down. Yeah, power so down. That actually makes me have a question here. Does Barney remember his failures better than other things? Depends. He knows he's failed. Sometimes it's hard to remember how exactly he's failed. Does that make enough. sense? No. He, but he, just, he just feels the disappointment. That's, yeah. That just sounds like my anxiety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can sense something there. I don't you need to remember it. what I did wrong, but I know I did at some point. The trauma did its work. <laughs> I don't need to remember it. It just did, did its job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you, John? Bonjour. Uh, je m'appelle Jean Reisinger. Uh -oh. uh, I play uh, Mati Confucius, uh, the Air Cochrane Ghost Monk, um, who is also at level 5. Level 5! <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to be afraid of anything when you have already faced most people's biggest fears, which is death. But if I had to think about it, my greatest fear is something that... Uh, you had a five about it? <laughs> <laughs> I've had to think about it. Sink. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that, was good. that was good. That was really, that was really good. He's already got one. Okay. If I had to think about it, it is the worst thing in the world. It is mold. 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 Oh, they are a if baker. If you turn oh. over what you think is a perfect baguette and it is covered in mold, it is a failure, it is a loss, it is like a death in the family. I was thinking like, you know, like in the ceiling. Yeah, like like real renovation, bad mold. like a contractor. Yeah, like but, you, well, I, you, I do you, not want that teacher. I, 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 you know, I, I like my my own. I also love how you said mold. Glenn and I went, oh, and then a two seconds later, <laughs> Chris oh. went, oh. Well, I was like, why, why, why? Like, because my brain went to like mold, like in the house. Yeah, and which I'm is like, also a big fear. Yeah, yeah, I, but I, like from Machid is a is a uh, small business owner. You don't want mold right. in yeah, your business. Yeah, I was thinking like though as a ghost, you're like I've already faced the greatest fear of death, and so mold. Is like, I didn't seem why why is Machid scared of mold? <laughs> you know what my favorite thing about uh, uh, John playing Machid is is how small his mouth says it gets when he goes. <laughs> 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 so with the mustache, it his mouth practically disappears. Guess what? What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear is the party vanquishing my traps for them. Oh, his greatest fear is rolling like a two on an attack roll against oh. us. Yeah. And it, it happened a lot recently. I know. Yeah. It's a uh, it's it's nightmare. It's the kind of stuff you wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. <laughs> <laughs> the party just walked through the door. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the party. As the crescent sun reaches high noon, you notice a shift in scenery from the surrounding shores and beyond. What was once a desolate desert scape is now a countryside of grassy knolls and mushroom fields. Mm. All the while, the column of black smoke has only grown larger and now fills the foreground. It takes you a moment to fully appreciate what you see. It appears to be a town, but it's slowly moving. Here at the edge of the river, you can make out a massive dribbling trail of slime leading up to a mountain-sized slug with neighborhoods of homes, businesses, and even roads constructed on its back. That's so cool. It would all be mesmerizing if not for one detail. It's all on fire. No! <laughs> no! This is uh, escargot flambe. <laughs> <laughs> Good ma almighty. It looks like Glurg is on fire. I would go and help, but what of my ship, my livelihood? And let's not forget, explore. Oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah. talk. <laughs> everyone, everyone around the circle of our party is like all nodding our heads like, oh yeah, this was Kurt. Yeah, I remember him now. <laughs> I know this is much to ask of strangers, but would you please go help my fellow Glurians? Oh my god. Yes. Yes! <laughs> yes, we would really like to go help you, fellow Glorians. <laughs> when there is a fire, chip paint chip. <laughs> take it again. <laughs> when there is a fire, Chip Haney will answer the call. Oh, right. Yeah, we, we just established that too. Volunteer firefighter. That's right. How do we put out snails? Usually I step on them. Well, mm -hmm. How far away are we from the giant snail city? You know, you all were on a ship in the water. Right. And, you know, there's fields out stretching out between you and Glurb. So, I mean, it's several hundred feet of fields leading up to Glurb. So we're in water that leads up to a beach that leads up to fields that leads up to the snail city. I would say a shore as opposed to a beach. It's not like an okay. ocean. It's like a river. So okay. we'd have to jump in the water to get to the town? Yeah, but, I mean, it's it, you can get 
this, this the design of the ship allows it to get pretty close to the shore. What you put we, down like a gang. Should plank. we? Uh, <laughs> do, do you want to do like like an aerial like firefighter thing and like Matid can grab Chip? I get a bunch of buckets. Chip just opens his mouth as Matid drags him along the water, and then we just drop water over the snail. Like, like I'm gonna have like a seagull <laughs> neck, like, just a glottal. Oh. Like <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, you know, like make the problem come to us. What if we flag down Snail City? And made it go into the, the water. So when it's you say it's on fire, and this is a city that's on top of a snail. Right. The city's on fire. The snail is on the fire. City. The city is on yeah. fire. Oh, okay. Do, could the snail just like do like we say like roll over, roll over? He kill and every then citizen it, in the. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. it's, a <laughs> was, <laughs> it's a quick way to put everyone out of the misery. Technically, the problem well, solved. Not stay rolled over, but just a quick. <laughs> I think no matter what, <laughs> Mateen would have a bunch of ghost friends with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have this stuck in my head, so I need to say it. My snail's on fire. How, How about, about yours? yours? <laughs> <laughs> like it's been in my head nonstop. All Mine morning. was this glurb is on fire. Can I can, I, <laughs> can I perceive if the snail notices even? Hmm, that's an excellent. It's just it's just screaming. It's <laughs> <laughs> moving one mile an hour. How do snails scream? Uh, very quietly. Ah! Make a, let's call it investigation check. Ooh, that's a good one. 21. Nice. It seems like the giant slug is rather nonplussed about the entire thing. Okay. It just seems to be moving on its own. What's the scale of this? This is a city. Yeah, I mean, it's like, the slug is like a mountain. It's gotcha. massive. It's oh, huge. Okay. So this is big. Yeah. yeah. It should be approach the city and, and yeah. try to get on the ground level to see what it is to do. Yeah. I do not have any solution for putting out an entire city, so I think Our we should... people, the Glurbians, uh -huh. are nomadic and move across Grotesque. This is not the time for a historical <laughs> tech talk about Glurbians. Normally, I would love to hear more information about the people around you, but I just have time is of the essence. This slug oh, is good, good lord. He's going <laughs> Okay. Oh, Glurbians. Matid grabs Elga <laughs> and flies off the ship. Well, uh, wait, Kirk, tell me more about the history of your people. I think it's very interesting. Where were they before Glurb? Yeah. I like to think Elga's flying away. Where were they yeah. before Glurb? Where were they before Glurb? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we should probably just like get in there and see what we can do on the ground. I agree. Yeah. K Kirk, were you going anywhere with that, or were you just, like, <laughs> you just real stop. proud of... Kirk? Stop addressing him. <laughs> he has to talk back when you address yeah, him. Yeah, but he's telling us information. We need to know. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I, acqu I acquiesce. Kirk, anything else? Please. Help. The Glurbians. I, 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 you, oh, my God. Okay, let's go. <laughs> they Matias. normally... Oh. Do not... Get involved in worldly affairs. They may be hesitant when meeting you. Does that help, Chip? Was that was that was that yeah. time? I'm sure five people died of fire burns while we were listening we to them. Like Elga. Elga. <laughs> Would they be hostile towards us when we try to help them? Great question, Elga. Not mm -hmm. hostile. Just shy. Oh, well, that is sweet. Maybe we'll just take the little blobs and throw them into the water. Do a little, <laughs> do a little donkey dunk. Like little, little uh, bow buns just kind of yeah. dropped in the lake. Captain Kerger, do you do, do your people have any weaknesses? If we were to expose them to water or something, fire. That, would that be <laughs> other than fire, obviously? <laughs> well, we don't know. They might be fine. <laughs> well, no, Captain Kerger's freaking out. So a context clues. Uh, I guess that it's bad. None. Jump to okay. mind. Let's get it in. Let's get, how do we get there? Are you fast? sure you do not want to ask any more questions? No, I'm done, Captain Kirk. Like I said, the ship you're on is pretty close to shore. It'd be easy to just hop off and, you know, cross the fields to get up to where Glurb is. And then, you know, figure out a way to climb or fly or whatever you want to do to get yeah, up Yeah, like, what's the way to, is there any way other than flight to get onto the snail? At this scale. Do they have any cool elevators? <laughs> it sounds like we're close enough to just hop on. Yeah, but I was just thinking, like, the scale of this giant snail and if the city's on top of it, like, do we have to, like, do some climbing? Yeah. Oh, some stairs. All right, let's go. No, why don't you guys go ahead? I'm going to stay with Captain Kirk and hear stories of his different escapades, and <laughs> I'll be here for about 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the time. You're immortal. All right, no, I'll, I'll hop off, too. All right, I hop off the boat in the coolest way you can imagine. Which is? Oh, please tell us. 
Uh, well, I was going to let the imagination. <laughs> 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 this is D&D. You have to paint the picture. I do. Uh, remember that old snowboarding game, 1080 snowboarding? Yeah. I do a 1080. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I do a 1080. What do you think a 1080 yeah, is? Probably has to do with degrees. So 360 times four? Yep. Two. Yes, 360 three? times four. Seven. That's like three three flips. So I do three front flips, 1080. Oh, three front flips. Okay. Make an make an athletics check. I remember that the video game 1080 snowboarding where the intro music was like work your body, work your body, mm -hmm. work your body, work your body. Twenty one. Work, work your body, work your body. I guess I never played this game. Uh, Chip walks up to the edge of the ship and does a few calf stretches and then uh, hops forward, doing three front flips, 1080 as it were, and lands uh, deftly with his feet under him uh, on the uh, shore of the. It looks river. like he's landing like Spider Man. No, like a uh, uh, Black Widow, like a three point landing. Yeah, wow. like a three point landing, and then. I I go, ooh, and it's like perfect sprinting stance. Yeah. Guys told me to preserve my energy. I'm doing standing, like, physical <laughs> yeah. gags. Yeah. Elgo walks off the boat. Okay. <laughs> El Elgo watches this and then sees a gangplank and then just moseys on over it's to it. Barney will follow Elgo. Wow. <laughs> Come on, Barney. Watch your walker. Or do you have your walker? Yeah, I had to. It, I lost the cane. I don't know where it went. Where did my cane I, I think go? it went back to the alchemist. The yeah, alchemist. alchemist took it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. Barney, I know, but Barney oh, doesn't Barney. remember. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what, Chris? I'm going to admit it's hard to see where the lines end, <laughs> where Barney ends and Chris begins. Mateed uh, watches this and does four front flips off of the ship. <gasps> four? <laughs> and oh, the, the 1440? Yeah, and lands on their toes and then dashes forward behind a uh, chip. I welcome this. This is cool. <laughs> We're like a unit. Do you have to like, do an ah. athletics check? Yeah, I want to see an athletics check on that. With flight? Yeah. yeah. Do it, John. Okay. Do it. It's still doing four front flips. Okay. You got to keep your orientation. Flying and yeah. flipping is different. That's true. Why are you How sweating, so? Mateed? What's going on? Let's do the 1440. 13? Not as impressive. I'll tell you what. Roll it again. I'll give you advantage because you do fly. What? Mateed hits Ooh, don't their want that. That was a four. Not quite as graceful. Maybe it's the addition of the extra front flip, but you still land it. You still stick it. Mateed nice. is not a, uh, a coastal bird. Mm. So a little bit, you know, moist feathers is just not the best. Mm, mm. In the future, we'll do acrobatics for checks like that. It's a dexterity base. But anyway, you, you also stick it. Oh, yeah. That was not strength. Yeah. I just realized on my own. That's stupid. That's my fault. Yes, you all are on the shore. There's um, yeah, a couple hundred feet worth of fields between you and Glurb up ahead. I assume you just start walking towards in that direction. Before we start walking, could Elga just cup her hands and go, Mrs. Glurb, uh, your back is on fire. Do you hear me? That's not a bad strategy. How does that pan out? Pretty far away, right? Yeah, you're pretty far. Make an investigation check. I'm guessing not with advantage. No. <laughs> <laughs> to use your glasses, yeah. you mean? That you have to be like an inch <laughs> yeah. away from what you're investigating? Uh, but I rolled an 18, so. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there was any change to Glurb's movement. Mm. Did I not call you by your legal name? <laughs> Maybe that is, that is not their pronouns. Maybe. Mm. So we run up or walk up? Yeah. That's climb right. like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm climbing. So you all start making your way across the fields. You know, it's like vast fields, like, you know, grass and a little bit of, you know, like mushrooms and stuff growing out here. It's very idyllic looking. Except for the snail fire. Except for, I mean, if you look down, it's idyllic. Oh, if yeah. you look up, oh, it's horrific. awful. Yeah, so you, wow, you look down. Wow, look at the flowers. Uh, what's your <laughs> marching order, just out of curiosity? I think Chip's in front. I'll lead the way. Volunteer fire brigade coming through. I'll go second. You're talking about uh, marching order to get up the snail? <laughs> like to walk through the field. Oh, so we're, we got to traverse the field. Yes. Okay. I guess I was behind Elgo. Okay, I'll trail in the rear. Mateed in the rear. As you all, you know, are, are walking through, alternating, looking up at the horror of the uh, snail on fire and looking down at the ideal field. Screaming and then admiring, screaming and admiring. <laughs> Chip, during one of the moments you're looking up and screaming, you don't realize it, but you walk near a patch of razor vine. Make a dexterity saving throw. That's why you wanted to know. Why you gotta put a dangerous field between us and this snail? It's gotta happen. Because it's D&D. <laughs> it's just a field. There's inherent danger in the world. So dexterity saving? This is just yeah. guesses, fear of the outside coming yes. out. In D &D. Stay inside, play D&D. Ha-cha, 25! Not only do I jump over it, I, I cut it for the passerbyers to follow. Do you have any ability where... <laughs> you are going to crash so hard You're so hard. 30 no, I'm minutes. No, I'm not. I'm looking at your empty cold brew mason jar in front of you. I, my body hasn't processed it. What do you guess? <laughs> Do you have an ability where when you successfully make a dexterity saving throw, you don't take any damage, even if you were supposed to take half? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that ability. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking right here. 
Yeah, I got it. Because he did roll a nat 20. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, no, I have that one. What is it called? Uh, it's it's right called here. a 1080. It's, uh, it's called work your body, work your body. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you rolled, so you only take two points of slashing damage <laughs> from okay. the razor vine. Does Matisse see this? Yeah, because you're behind. Okay, and the razor vine is just on the ground? Yeah. Okay, Matisse, I guess, does their best and grabs Barney and flies over the... Razor vine. <laughs> <laughs> the look on Chris's face when you said when he grabs Barney was like pure joy. I also like, like the idea that Barney didn't see the razor vine. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and also did not see Mateed and yeah. is not aware and just think... thinks he is the flying I'm boy. Fl- I'm flying. Barney's feet are still kicking like a dog when you pull them out of the water yeah. and they still swim. Where's Mateed? Mateed, look, I can fly too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so y'all uh, continue making your way. Mateed and Barney airborne while Chip and Elga continue to plod along on the ground. Communicate to Elga that there's Bush! Bush, watch out for the Razor Bush! Vines. Not George W., the other! A bush? Okay. Razor Vine! Okay, I see you. Thank you, Chip. You're right in front of me, so I did notice that you almost <laughs> just, hurt yourself. He's just turned around. <laughs> he's like, bush! just yelling down at you. <laughs> fire! There's a fire! There's a fire! Oh. Go! <laughs> Okay. Uh, could Elga, like, I guess, jump over it yeah. or, like, try to get around it since she saw... Yeah, you can give it a pretty wide berth and get around it uh, easily now that Chip pointed it out. That's a good kid at Firefighter. Vulture Firefighter right there. Barney, you know, you're you're taking in the sights, really enjoying <laughs> soaring through the air. Barney is just on his own soaring over California <laughs> ride from Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> just... I'm, I'm trying to imagine, like, what would Barney focus on? Would he be looking at the ground? Would he be looking up? Would he be looking at Glurb? Like, this, since this is like a new perspective on the world, like, how would Barney take it all in? I think he'd looking at the ground and then just Chris like his arms out like he's about to sing <laughs> like uh, I, I can show you the war. <laughs> I think looking at the ground seeing it all fly by mm. then maybe up at the snail burning mm. and then getting a little scared so then going back to the ground <laughs> As you look up at the snail and the fire, something slimy falls from the sky and splats you right in the face. Oh, no. What is it? I don't know, but make me a constitution saving throw. We'll see if we can figure out what it is. Did the snail spit me? Well, we're on the rear of it. Uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> I think we know what that means. Ten? Snail doo-doo. The slime is, like, stinging your eyes a little bit. Uh, Luckily, your arms are free. Uh, it's going to take you, like, a minute or so to scoop it all out from your eyes. You think maybe it's just some errant slime from the snail's back. Snail storm! <laughs> nice. Does Matisse see this? Yeah, you see that Barney's like pawing at his eyes. Okay, I, I want to look up and see if it, there's more of this. Is it like a flurry of this? Like a barrage? That's a good word. No, there's like, there's intermittent drops of slime falling. Okay, then I would do my best to avoid further splash damage. Sounds good. Back on the ground, Yeah. did Chip get hit by this wire stuff? The razor vine, yeah, he took uh, two points of slashing Is damage. Is he bleeding at all? <laughs> it slashed at him, so yeah, he would have like, you know how when you're walking around like roses, you have thorns, or yeah. like you're walking mm-hmm. around in shorts in the outdoors, and like some branch scratches up against you and draws a little bit of blood. Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Could I go up to him and hold my sippy cup of satiation by his cup, and I go, "Here, quick! You're bleeding, ship. Bleed into this cup. You don't want to bleed on the ground and and ruin the beautiful lands of Glurb." I'm imagining we're still running while this is happening, so I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Could I hold up my sippy cup and have him bleed into it? Yeah, I mean that's as long as Chip's down with it. Oh yeah, we just gotta go, Cadet Junior Firefighter in training. <laughs> Here, let's make sure all the blood is really fully out of it. And I squeeze <laughs> the part of his arm or whatever. Yeah, that like. that's good. Preserve the beautiful landscape. My blood might be flammable because I am a tiefling. <laughs> a spicy drink for Elga. Yeah. Okay. Like a Bloody Mary. And then she uh, puts her sippy cup away. Nice. So uh, you all, uh, you know, Barney, you eventually scoop all the slime out of your eyes and uh, you get really close to Glurb and everyone roll me a perception check. The slime? 20. Six. Is there anything good about it? The stinging like the slime, slime yeah, that yeah. hurts like, your eyes? Yeah, like... Do I recognize it as in, in it having any value? The, uh, <laughs> the area around your eyes. They're whores. You can make a medicine check if you want to okay. figure that out. I was actually thinking about that because this is a massive... Barney's got pretty good medicine. Ten. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, want to, I want to note, there was no editing there. That was not Micah getting rid of like the, 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 the pause. <laughs> I have pretty good medicine check. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is like a city of snail man size thing producing this. Anyways, what does it do? 
Wow, was there sentence in there? No. <laughs> it's like, like this, this is a city is of snail-sized men. There, there were words. There were words. You don't think there's anything of value to it. You think it's just like regular snail I goo or slug true. goo, just big. I think everything has value. Now <laughs> Barney is just arguing with God. <laughs> everything has value in its own way. Okay, what was everyone's perception? Twenty check? from Elga, I heard. Mm -hmm. uh, six from Chip. Twenty-one, Matid. And what about perception for Barney? I think it was eight. It was eight. <laughs> Sorry, I got so caught up with my medicine. So, uh, Chip and Barney are busy arguing over the value of slug goo, while Matita and Elgar are surveying the situation. Matita and Elgar, you both notice there appear to be small flying creatures in the area around Glurb. What do they look like? They're hard to see because they're so small and they're at kind of a distance from you. If you didn't know any better, you'd say that they're flying cats. Oh. Like little ones? Mm. Yeah. Can we tell if, like, that's where the goo came from? Or does it seem to have come from the snail? It seems like it's slug goo or snail okay. goo, yeah. Hey, Barney, there seems to be little flying creatures. They look to be maybe cats. I think it's a bird. A bird? A plane? Training cats and dogs? Where is this going? <laughs> Global herbal <Where> is <laughs> But he's not a cat. Oh, no, I'm talking about the way far away, Barney, like all the way in the distance. Not, oh. the per not the person carrying you right now currently. I'm yelling this, by the way, so that Barney could hear. Do the bird... Do the cats <laughs> look like they're glowing or anything? Could they be the source of fire? Glowing. Like, are they, are they could, like methods? Yeah, yeah. Are they like, well, this phoenix was a, like a fiery cat, flying cat. That's oh. true. Are they baby phoenixes? Oh. Phoenix. Phoenix. Not Let's phoenixes. Try again one more time. Are they baby phoenixes? Nope. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my head is in my head. Everyone's head is in their hands. <laughs> he was so sure. Wish, he was so sure he yeah. had it. I wish we could get metrics on when people pause this podcast because I bet a lot of people paused it right then because they're trying to stifle laughter at work. Holy Shaking their crap. Head up. All right. Uh, All one, right, more one, one more try, one more try. One, I would two, rather three. Not. Yeah. <laughs> a phoenix with a sphinx. With phoenix. Phoenix, phoenix not a... Th oh. Try again. A phoenix with a sphinx. sphinx. Yep. It's phoenix with an S at the beginning. It's a phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't do this. Yeah. I'm going to end up saying sphincter. <laughs> so that's what I thought I said. Phoenix. It, it is that that pre sphincter? prefix. It is that prefix. <laughs> now, add that prefix to phoenix. Phoenix. It's a phoenix. It's a phoenix. There you go. Like hooked yeah. on phonics. You're, 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 you're adding like an uh. I know, you're, you're saying like a a phoenix. Hooked on saphonics? <laughs> 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 Pleasantries, my pungent pals. I often get asked, what's the best way to support Tales from the Stinky Dragon? So to help explain, I brought my good friend John along to chat with me about it. Yeah, so the best way you can support us is by one, I mean, obviously just being yourself. That's what that would support me is just knowing that you're being your true self. Me too. And knowing that will help us. But beyond that, it's by becoming a first member on roosterteeth.com which is essentially our patron model for people who want to support the show in a financial way. And so if you go to roosty.com and become a first member, it's only $5.99 a month. And basically, if you either become a first member or even just watch our content on roosterteeth.com, we get the most value out of it, which we then can turn the most value possible into even more stinky content. And on top of just supporting us from an altruistic standpoint, you also get stuff out of it too, right? Like you can listen to our episodes yeah. ad-free, for example. I hate ads. You could take up a hobby with all the time you save not listening to ads. <laughs> Maybe you could yeah. make your own dice for your own Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Your hobby could be that you join us on our official Discord, which is only for our first members yeah. on our Rooster Teeth Discord, where we're posting exclusive content. Today that we're recording this, I posted some behind-the-scenes photos from our Stinky Dragon Adventures production that just went into production this week. Well, you know, it's... Man, you set me up for the perfect segue there, John. On top of that bonus stuff, you also get access to Second Wind, which is our bonus show for Tales from the Stinky Dragon. It's pronounced Second Wind. Second wind yep. where you know we do a, a dive into that week's episode we talk about things that happened what's going on you know maybe avenues that were left unexplored where the party is what the plans are what you all messed up sometimes uh, either myself Pardon. or michael will be there to help give more information i've never messed up on this show before in my life everything has been strategically planned sure we'll find out the, the <laughs> rationale behind john when you listen to second wind as a Rooster Teeth first member, again, just five ninety nine a month, yeah. you get tons of bonus stuff. You get a discount in the Rooster Teeth store. Get no ads in Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Background play, yeah. offline viewing on mobile apps. Check it out. It's pretty great. 
If you haven't checked recently, I'd recommend you head over to store.roosterteeth.com because we got brand new Stinky Dragon merch. All kinds hey, of Gus. stuff is out there. Oh, but, oh, John, you scared me. I didn't see you there. Blurble Gurble to you. Oh, and a Blurble Gurble to you too. Did you know you can buy Blurble Gurble merchandise at <laughs> store.roosterteeth.com? Wait, I can get Blurble Gurble on actual physical objects I can have in my home? What could I get that on? You could be living the Blurble Gurble lifestyle, John. <laughs> <laughs> Go check out all of the fine Blurble Gurble merch again at store.roosterteeth.com. We've also got grotesque player character apparel, all on mugs, shirts, posters, beach towel, you name it. We got a blanket. We have a blanket. We have a blanket. I'm excited to get my blanket. I don't have the blanket yet. I know. I've got mine on the way right now. I'm excited to snuggle up with some stinky dragon blankets. They're not stinky. The blankets are not stinky. I want to make that very clear. What you do with them once you get them, that's your own business, but they're not stinky yes. from the factory. You, the community, can make whatever Stinky Dragon merch you want stinky after you get it, and we kind of encourage it, actually. But we can promise that it'll come to your house, not pre-stunk. We'd also like to hear from you any ideas you have for merch that you want to see, yeah. whether it's a Yamford Yams college sweatshirt, a shooty, an ethereal fanny pack, or bum bag yeah. of holding, whatever <laughs> whatever we called it. Uh, personally, I'm pushing for Live, Laugh, Blurble, Gerble poster. That's what I want. You know, the sky's the limit with Blurble, Gerble and our merch, and the community did such a good job of knocking out of the park when we released our dice which was like we were trying to see if this would work out and like that stuff sold out so quickly that we're like that's awesome we'd love to get more stinky stuff out there and we'd love the community's involvement as far as deciding it so if you want to go to socials and let us know what you think you'd love to see or if you want to go to our exclusive discord if you're our first member and you can go there and let us know we want your input we would love to know what you would love we've got some ideas ourselves coming the way we might even have like more dice coming Ooh, i'd like that but beyond that if you want to get us your ideas we're open to them yeah head on over to our socials or discord and let us know let us know you hear that sound that's the sound of a sale you're missing out on because you're not selling on shopify what does shopify sound like ah much better start selling with shopify today it's the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide whether you're a garage entrepreneur or ipo ready shopify is the only tool you need to start run and grow your business without the struggle with Shopify, you're in control of every sales channel from in-person POS systems to all-in-one e-commerce platforms. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify is the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. Plus, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, including companies like Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon. Take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash dragon. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll accept it. Phoenix, or alternatively, Sa Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. That's fine. You know what? Close works. Yeah, we're, we're close enough. We don't need to be perfect here. We're not <laughs> professional D&D players. And what was your question? I'm sorry, I got, I so, I got so derailed with the pronunciation know. here. Something about how uh, can we tell if like they're creating the fire? Are they small versions? It does not appear like they are causing the fire. Like they're not on fire. They're not carrying fire. They're, they're not kind of flying like around. Spitting fire. They seem to shimmer as the light hits them, but it doesn't. You don't think it's like fire. Shimmering flying cats. Yeah. I think. We should get closer. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious if they're related to this phoenix. Mati just kind of makes a beeline with Barney towards the city. Okay. And then uh, me and Chip as well. Mm -hmm. I'll get in Chip. Continue on, I imagine. Mm -hmm. well, I can put you in my fanny pack. I'm just sorry. I said, while we were flying, I was just imagining the, the uh, never ending story. Like yeah. when, whenever it's he's on Falcor. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Sphincter! <laughs> Mati recognizes this and then swoops down to scare Chip and Elga <laughs> like he did in the movie. Yeah, could I could I ride in uh in, in Chip's fanny pack of holding? I don't think you can get in. Oh yeah, absolutely. Can I you get in? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold uh, on tight. But I want to keep my hands and head out of it. Like a little baby. Like a, like a little kangaroo. Like a little kangaroo yeah. baby. In that case, we'll make Chips make an athletics check to begin climbing up the side of Glurb. Oh okay. wait, I have good athletics. Could I add my athletics to this? Like, you're, uh, you, you roll to assist. Go ahead and make an athletics check as well. 17. Like little T-Rex hands. Yeah, you're like a second <laughs> set of hands coming out of Chip's uh, stomach. I help with a 10. Yeah, you're good enough. It's not too difficult of a climb. There's Sometimes you have to go in a roundabout way to avoid 
globs of slime that are uh, dripping down the side of Glur, but you make it up pretty quickly. As you all are climbing and as Mateed is flying up, and you get closer to these flying cats, and they seem like small cat-like creatures that have shimmering fur and feathered wings. Shimmering in what way? Like the like scales? No, just like iridescent. Like magical. Oh, like a 3D okay. cassette. Oh, like, uh, a, like a vampire in Twilight. Do yeah. they seem to, like, fit in with the aesthetic of the city, or are these, like, outside visitors? Can I Make a nature check. I would imagine in a place named Glurb. Like oh, shiny, wow. feathery cats are maybe not Hard native. Say. Ah, yes. Three. Cats, like, more like a house cat or more like a humanoid cat. Does that make sense? You mean, like, the Broadway musical cats? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, is it a, is a cat humanoid? What? Does it look like Mr. Mistopheles? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> is it like a cat person? Or is it just little cats? Like Lionel from Thundercats. Yeah. Okay, see, if you'd asked oh, about- so it's, it's a sexy cat. Yeah, well, <laughs> is it Mr. Mistopheles a sexy cat? No, I say Lionel is. All the cats in Thundercats are way too sexy. Oh! I think Barbara's <laughs> Googling Mr. Mistopheles over here. <laughs> <laughs> trying like, to find like his like pictures one of these here. cats, you know? And it's, it's more like a house cat. They're okay. small, house cat sized. Roll the three, Taylor by the way. Yeah, they totally fit in. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, what's uh, their activity? It seems like they're just flying around the perimeter of Glurb. Not like swooping down or anything? Well, at that point, they catch eyes and they spot you all climbing and flying. A few of them begin closing the distance of flying in quickly. We'll say four of them are uh, flying towards you guys. Hello! Vultures or some sort. Can I do some sort of check to see if it is an aggressive approach? Yeah, make an insight check. Uh, I rolled a nat 20, so 26 on insight. It seems like they're approaching with hostility. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Bunny, get ready for the battle. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone go ahead and roll initiative. Oh. 19 for Elga. 12. So I can't remember if I'd had my double initiative thing on, if I had mentioned it. You had. Aha. 22. I rolled the same number twice. 13. Okay, Chip, you are, you know, on a little landing near the top of the snail with uh, Elga in your, what do we call it? Your bum bag? Yeah. Uh, bum bag of holding. Yes. And four of these winged cat-like creatures seem to be closing in very quickly. Okay. How far away? Yeah, they're like flying, right? Yeah, they're flying in. We'll say 25 feet. Okay. I'm going to shoot at the the one that's closest to any of my party members. Okay. With my crossbow. Mm -hmm. And then I also have this thing called assassinate. Uh, you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, and any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Okay, it has not taken a turn, but, you know, obviously it's not surprised. Okay. Well, then I'll roll for crossbow twice because I have advantage on that. That was a 24. Nice. And that's a nat 20. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey. Pew, pew, pew. So that means you do crit damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Excellent. Hey, Mateed, watch this. Oh, my God. That's two sixes. <laughs> wow. 14. Oh, boy, I just want to let you know, Mateed wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. So you fire a crossbow bolt at it. You line up the shot, uh -huh. get the creature perfectly in your sights, and mm -hmm. you know, squeeze the trigger. The bolt flies true, hitting the creature in the head, and it begins oh. falling to the ground below. And, and keep in mind, my stance was like that of Han Solo, where I had one arm up, like, <laughs> for some reason. Back arm up over your head, yeah. front arm facing forward, and shooting. And Elga is just a pair of eyes peeking out of your <laughs> zipper. And two little hands. And, and two little hands. And that's the movie poster. Blaine continues his pattern of just mercilessly murdering small animals in our D&D &D yep. campaigns. Well, they're hostile. He was about <laughs> to attack my friends. Okay, so then now that I did that, I am going to then use cunning action. And then I guess I'm going to just hide. <laughs> It's what you're supposed to do, but the way you said it was humorous. <laughs> so you're also going to hide. Go ahead and make a, uh, just, just so we have it on record, make a stealth check. Okay. Also, did the ones that fell, are they dead or are they just like Ooh. hurt? It was one that fell and it, it appears to be unmoving. 18. And if it wasn't dead before, that long drop definitely took care of it. Oh, cool. 18 for your stealth check. Yep. I'm just going to write it down so I have it. Also, anything I need to do, uh, is, since it's still my turn to like either help Elga out or, or whatever they want to do, because like, I realize that I'm carrying them with me, so. Mm -hmm. Can you throw me out? Can I throw her out? Yeah, if you want. Or just, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. Okay. Elga, I choose you. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the creatures goes before Elga. Uh, you, Elga, you'll go after the creature. How dare. It, you know, swoops in. Let's have it make a a check to see if it sees you, Chip, even though you're hiding. Okay. It has a plus five on this. And you rolled an eight, so it needs a 13 or better. Okay. Nine. So, yeah, it does not see you. You've disappeared to it. 
and by proxy, I'll say Elga has also disappeared since she's in your bum bag. Okay. So <laughs> this creature sees Mateed and Barney. It's going to swoop over towards them. And what will it do? It's going to get close and, you know, use its paws and lash out with some talents and trying to trying to hit Mateed. So it swipes out with small talents that appear like they're like fiery. Like, you know, it swipes at you. It's some fiery talons emerge. Mm, definitely Phoenix. It hits the Phoenix. AC <laughs> 13. Uh, does not hit. Does not hit. It uh, swipes at you. Misses and then uh, hisses. Oh, misses and hisses. Little rhyme. Jacques hisses back. Ooh, it's, it, uh, it becomes a little shocked and it arches its back in midair. <laughs> That's cool. That's adorable. <laughs> Spicy kitty. That's all it does. Can, can I lean down to Elga real quick? Yeah. Be like, hey there, kiddo. Welcome to the stealth life. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make decisions for you, but if you want a subclass as a rogue, this is what it feels like. There's a lot of... Elga is not hearing any of this. There's a lot of hiding. I'm imagining it's a soundproof bag. <laughs> <laughs> All she hears is... <laughs> Your blank expression eyes just staring out. Elga's like, he must be hungry. <laughs> I, I guess I should ask... A point of clarification. I thought your like head and arms were sticking out. Is your head yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, they, no, they, they're there. She's just, she just joking. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, was joking. I should clarify if your head is in, when you are in the bag of holding, you would need to like hold your breath. Oh, yeah, no, I'm my, my head is out. My just another rowdy teenager doesn't want to listen to their parent figure. I'm listening. I just, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you need to breathe inside the bag, you can survive up to a number of minutes equal to 10 divided by the number of people inside. So you can spend up to 10 minutes in there. Okay. Dude. That's pretty long. That's going to be our next uh, aquatic uh, naval battle attack thing. Yeah. You just put all of us in your yeah, bag. Yeah, just stuff you all in there and then I run through. But then it's less time with more people. Yeah, right. If there were three of you, oh, it would be three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. yeah. Oh, if only I can make a little hut. What? Yeah, come on in. Build a tent. Come. I can make a hut. In the <laughs> suburbs of Phoenix? No, I can, <laughs> I can make a hut that makes you you can hide in. That's a spell I got. I, I don't really know how it works, but it makes a little hut. You could hide inside the thing you're hiding in. Hut, hut, yeah. hut, hut, hut. We're hiding all the way down. What's the spell called? Hut maker. Lemon's <laughs> tiny hut. Okay. All right. Use me as a battering ram. <laughs> Elga, you're up. Then after you is another one of them and then Barney. Okay. Um, well, I want to get out of the bag. Okay. Is that an action or a uh, You can just do it. We'll just say okay. you do it. I'm going to get out of the bag. It's your movement. And could I try to cast this scroll of blur? Yeah. So you can use the spell scroll. Uh, you just need to make an arcana check with a DC equal to 10 plus the spell's level. The spell's level is... Second level. So I would have to roll a what? An Arcana check, DC 12. Okay, I rolled a 19. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So you pull it out. This is the first time you've... Uh... This is the first time my scroll has been successful. Yeah, you, 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 you've done it, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you pull it out, and at first you're holding the scroll upside down. You're like, oh, wait, not the other way. Uh, <laughs> uh, you orient it correctly. You read it, and you think at first that maybe it's not doing anything. Then you look down and you realize your body has become blurred and it's like shifting and wavering. Has it become blurbled gurbled? Blurbled gurbled. <laughs> so metagame wise, any creature attacking you has disadvantage on attack rolls. Yeah, cool. Like the flash. Yeah, or, yeah, or, vibrating. Or one of those documentaries where they try to keep the identity of the person a secret. <laughs> Hello, I'm Elgo. I mean, uh, sh shoot. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so that did not last long. In case it ever comes up in the future, any attacker that doesn't rely on sight, like if they have blind sight or if they can see through illusions, is immune to effects of blood. Am I, are these uh, little cats able to see me without sight? It seems like it is effective against them. And then was using that scroll an action bonus action? What's the, I don't think I have that. Since it was a uh, custom thing, I don't think I have that. In an action in Baldur's Gate, but I think Gus will give you a little break oh, and just make it a bonus action, right Gus? In Baldur's Gate, which is a bonus action, I, we do it a lot more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, scrolls in Baldur's Gate rule. Yeah, no, I think normally it's an action. We'll, we'll just say, we'll, we'll homebrew it. We'll say it's a bonus action. Okay, cool. And then could I try throwing my Axe of the Scarab at the one closest to Matid? It's pronounced Sakarab. <laughs> Sakarab. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Go. Is there any sort of advantage to that? Because they're hiding, perhaps? Is it 12 hit? 12 actually does hit. Okay, nice. sweet. And then that's going to do... Not heavily armored kids. Ten points of damage, and I want it to come back to me as well. Okay, so you toss your axe of the scarab out, impacts the cat, and begins falling to the ground along with the cat-like creature. But as you know, it's falling past you. You reach your hand out, and uh, the axe comes back to you. Ooh. Good little axe. That's so cool. <laughs> Elga petting her yeah, axe. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Licks the blood. <laughs> is there anything else Elga can do? 
Uh, that I think I'm gonna end my turn right there. Okay. Like the way that Barbara Sounds phrases good. that, like the, I'm, de- I'm deciding. Yes. I'm deciding to end my. I could do more. Cancel and turn. Yeah. Enter. Cancel and turn. Yeah. Enter. <laughs> I give a stealth clap from the bush. <laughs> All the little cats turn. <laughs> <laughs> the golf clap. <laughs> yeah. You could do ASL clap. Oh, with there the you shaking go. hands. Oh, yeah. Shake my hands in here. You see the bush. <laughs> Two purple <laughs> hands. The bush is growing hands. One of the uh, other creatures sees what you've done, Elga, and flies towards you, swooping at you, trying to, again, swipe at you, but it's going to have disadvantage because you are blur. Blur, blur, blur. blur. There's the two, two left? Correct. Mm-hmm. With disadvantage, uh, it rolls uh, an 11, which I assume is a miss. Yeah, I'm a... AC 15. Yeah, that's pretty good for a barbarian. Heck yeah. That means it's Barney's turn, and then after Barney is Matia. I have a question. Of course. Can, 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 <laughs> can Matia toss me as part of my turn? Like, can I, you could delay your action and let me do that. You two are back to back. You rolled a 13, Matia rolled a 12. I'll say we can kind of merge it here. Why not? Toss me. <laughs> when, when do you want me to toss As you? one of the kitties. I toss an old man at a cat. <laughs> <laughs> do you think anyone's ever said that sentence in the history of the world? Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. 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 I tossed an old man at a cat. Yeah. I'm claiming that one. Okay, yeah, sure, you get tossed. We're not that high up, are we? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Should have I described the slug as being mountain-sized. Oh. Okay, well, you got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll you figure it out. You jumped out a window at a college. <laughs> uh, how, do I hit the cat? Do I hit one of the cats? Oh, you wanted him to toss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. toss okay. me at a cat. Like, at, like a like a. He saw. Yeah. He, he saw has- Elga throw the axe. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, roll me, Matid, roll me a, a, a twenty-sided die. Let's just see. If it's a good roll, yes. If not, no. <laughs> it's a seven. No, <laughs> you do not hit a cat. If you get how, close to how, it. How, how close? Ten feet away. <laughs> Throw a hut at it. You're 10 feet away. Up, you can do a lot up. from 10 feet. Yeah, I know. Got, I know. I know. Attacks. I know. I, I build a tiny hut. <laughs> like, I can't do that. It takes a minute. You have a long way to fall down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cast uh, slow uh, fall uh, off no, on no, Barney. No. I, I think, let me think here. Let me think here. Think, Barney. Think. Can you throw anything? I want to, I want something? to, within, uh, it's all kinetic. Uh, five feet. It's five just, feet. He's just Is muttering. it moving towards me? No. Oh, man. Are you sure I can't be within five feet of it? Ten feet. I, I'm, Ten. Already, I'm already giving okay, you so okay, much. Okay. On a okay. seven. I, on a seven. I, I, I give an inch, and Chris nah. constantly tries to take nah. a mile. I cast. You're falling, Chris. You're falling. I cast. <laughs> what are you going to cast? Barney, oh what are you going to cast? God. Barney's falling. I cast. What do you do, hot shot? I what do you do? Cast. How far? Do I have a minute? <laughs> <laughs> if you fall at 32, what's terminal velocity? Just cast something. Yeah, yeah yes, you'd have a minute. I'll oh say yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Sure, why not? Nice. All right. I cast Lamont's tiny hut. Oh, man. <laughs> a 10 foot. A mobile dome of force springs into existence around me hey guys. and remains stationary for the duration. Barney's playing Fortnite. <laughs> He's building. The spell ends if I leave the area. Nine, anyone want to? Y'all are welcome in my hut. Where's Nine your hut? In the air. I imagine he just built a tent and then it, he completes it, goes inside, rises about to hit the ground, and then it just shatters. Just. Yeah, what <laughs> happens? Does the tent float or does it then like. It says it remains stationary. Oh, like in a quantum state? Like in a movable oh, type object? My God. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing that Chris There's has done just, in D&D. Barney's just floating in a hut <laughs> in the middle of the sky. <laughs> could, now, what, now was, could one of the cats have been in, in the hut with me? I don't know. Uh, it's what? A, it's, it's a 10-foot radius, <laughs> so yes. So I, I trapped the cat. Yes, the cat is in the hut with you because the hut has a 10-foot radius, so. Oh, my God. just okay. made a falling Thunderdome with him <laughs> and his cat. No, it's in mo- Two, enter one, leave. <laughs> Two, enter one, leave. So, wait, I need to catch up. You you cast a hut midair yes. around the cat. And himself. And yourself. Yeah. So now you are dis- it is stuck in a quantum oh. state in the air. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I just realized it takes you a minute to cast, to right? cast. So, no, the cat would not be stuck around. Okay. Because I, I thought if it went out instantly, the cat would be there. Mm. Uh, or the, say, the cat-like creature. Okay. You you fell for a minute and are most of the way down to the ground. And that's okay. where the, that's where so the, the hut Barney comes Barney is now in a floating hut close to the ground. Yes. What's Barney doing? What in the Looney Tunes are you going to do, bro? <laughs> What was your he end game here? He just what he was doing, and he's like, oh, this is a nice place. <laughs> I, I want to uh, paint a uh, picture uh, for the audience. Chris is not giving us a look like he has <laughs> any plan. No plan. Okay, so. I love it. I'm going to rules lawyer a little more here. Really now? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Say it isn't so, Gus. It describes 
this hut uh -huh. as a dome, uh -huh. which implies there's no floor. What if I catch it upside down? Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't think of that, did you guys? It's just, you're Didn't just think in, of that. You're just in a bowl? He's in a little bowl. <laughs> in a sky a bowl? A bowl of Barney. So you're in a bowl. Part then. of a complete breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a, a bowl, Barney bowl of Barney. And Jesus. I use my bonus action. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you do. To how far away is now the bird? Cat? A mile. The cat? Yeah. I, it's like <laughs> several hundred feet. So there's no, no other cats nearby? No. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's, That's it. Yeah. That was My head cannon is that he cast the dome upside down, fell into it, and now is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if the dome would stop. I don't know if he would fall through. I'm not going to think about it anymore. <laughs> Barney's in a sky bowl. <laughs> Captain Kirk's watching this from afar on the boat, <laughs> slowly turning the ship around. Oh, God. Matid, what do you want to follow that up with? I, I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> the, there is, uh, Elga killed the cat that was in my direct, like, directly in front of me. Correct. That one that attacked me. Correct. And so there are two more. Yes. One theoretically that I threw Barney at, mm -hmm. and then another one somewhere. Another one that had gotten close to Elga and tried to attack her. Okay, so one airborne and one down the ground. Yes. Or is that, I'm asking, is that one airborne that we threw Barney at? Correct. Yeah, okay. Then how far is the one that is in the air? Not too far. You I mean you toss Barney at it. We'll say 20 feet. Okay, then I'm going to go at it, and I'm going to attack it with my Spear of the Superior Baker and do that as my first uh, attack action. Okay. Oh, do you have two actions now, or two attacks? I got two actions, and if I do that, uh, I can do a third strike, actually. Mm. Okay, cool. I'm a monk. That's I'm really monk. cool. I'm a monk. I had a plan for how I could have killed the ground cat, but you, you go wild, Monty. That's a 14, so that hits. That hits. It's D6 plus 6. That's only seven damage. Okay. The cat-like creature is still flying. Let us do it again. Oh, uh -huh. another. That's a 17. That hits. With eight damage. Oh, uh, yeah. That renders the cat immobile, and it begins falling to the ground. It's up, it land in my bowl? Yeah, it's up, Barney. <laughs> Dead cat lands in your bowl. As you strike at it with your spear, I, I, I should have mentioned this for Elga as well, but I will mention it for, uh, How for dare you. you. How dare you? As you get close and, you know, you attack these creatures within, you know, melee range, uh, you feel like a tremendous amount of heat uh, radiating from them. Okay, so they are spinous. Fiery. Maybe. Yes. Well, they, they attacked with fiery claws. They are giving off They're heat. not on fire, but they're definitely hot. Mm. Okay, so they are Thundercats. Got it. <laughs> okay, then how far did I, I, I... I'm sorry. How far did I go to get to this About one? About 20 feet. Okay, then how far is the last one? So let's say it's another 20 feet down. Then I go down and ground. I attack. Is that one with my vinyl attack? Mm -hmm. Your vinyl attack? Yep. Yeah, mm. I get to do... <laughs> I don't do much at this point, except for just do a lot of attacks in a row. That's, what, that's the monk that's life. Great, that's yeah. the monk life. We love it. We need it. I'm just going to go ahead and do another spear attack. That is a nat 20. 29. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, you're probably going to demolish this creature, but go ahead and roll damage anyway. I hope so. Let's keep tanking here. That's 13 damage. It's actually going to be more than that. We'll take your first one because it, it automatically rolls two dice. We homebrew that one of the dice that's does right. maximum so damage. So it's actually 16 points of damage. Oh, okay. And sure enough, the creature falls to the ground, unmoving down oh, to the ground below. Mati turns to Chip and goes, I got two of them. I was, I, I'm in the bush. I had my knife ready to stab that one. Uh, so instead of jumping out to stab, I jump out for a hug. <laughs> So I guess three of you are together and Barney's dead somewhere. He fell uh, an <laughs> indeterminate amount of distance below you. I go and get the floating Barney. Well, you can't enter it until I, unless it's got no top. Or no bottom. I think it has, I think it's- I ruled it does Okay, <laughs> I jump out and I go, hi. <laughs> from how high up? No, I jump up like, oh, to, oh, to me be dead. To, to be me caught. To okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, you said jump out. I was like, what is yeah, Barney yeah. doing? Look at that. <laughs> that is a, a wonderful bubble. <laughs> You did such a good job. I watched this the whole time you making it for that entire minute you were falling to the ground. <laughs> we make a really good team. Yes. Yes. I would agree. Captain Kirk is watching. All he's seeing is a bowl in the sky, birds flying over, no chip, a blurry Elga. Yeah. Where are the rest of the cats? That was all of them. We, oh, all, we, we got, got them. Good. Them all. <laughs> yeah. all dead. That was real. That was real. Okay. You retrieve Barney and uh, reconvene with your, your party. Nice. You're you're close to the top. I assume you just finish your final push and get up there. Oh yeah, I gotta go to the city. Gotta save the the, the residents. 
You reach the top of Glurb, Slimy Shell, and come upon a smoky alleyway walled in to your right and left. The ground is presumably made from the shell, some sort of slick, calcified material. Mm. However, there seems to be a path made of wood planks built into the ground. They're currently smoldering, and it's difficult to see past the smoke. You see that there? That's against the fire code. Yeah. How so? Well, you know, it's made of the real... Fl uh, there's no anti-inflammatory materials or mm. paint or anything to prevent a, a blaze from happening. Now it's spreading, uncontrolled. Isn't paint flammable? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone go ahead and roll me a perception check, just because it's kind of right. difficult to see right now with all this smoke. E six. That's a tree. Tree? <laughs> what? One, two, tree. tree. Twelve. 15. Okay. Elga and Chip, even though the town is moving at a slow pace, you start to feel really motion sick. Oh, no. It's taking all your energy not to gag. Okay. Am I still blurry? It lasts up to a minute, so I'm going to say it's probably dissipated okay, by now. Okay, okay. Barney and Mati, the smoke clears for a moment. You see the path that winds between tent-like homes and businesses is set ablaze. Uh, they're people. Right now, it seems like the streets are overrun with uh, little minions, like little cats, like you saw before, the little oh. cat-like creatures. And they seem to be, you know, running building to building, lighting buildings on fire. Oh, no. <gasps> we Goodness gotta kill gracious. the cats. Yeah. And uh, there are some uh, residents also running and seemingly trying to hide. Yeah. They're like a resident we could approach. None seem to be coming out to you. They all seem to be either hiding or running away. But it seems like it's a pretty straight path for you, even though, because you, you, you're, like I said, you're walled in on the left and the right. It seems like there's only one direction you can really head towards. Does anybody have like a thing they could do to like blast all these kitties? <laughs> Um, <laughs> like, that was going to be the end of your sentence. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you have like a nice old, knife. Like Fang frost? Oh, I did actually. Our last episode, I got a cat blaster. <laughs> <laughs> God about that. Oh, good, good, good. Could I use my fang frost? Attack? That's a good idea. Is it to, to attack a particular cat or? Well, you said they're like over, like the streets are overrun with them. Yeah, they're just like everywhere. They're, you know, running around. And they're also flying. So it's not mm -hmm. like they're just on the ground. They're, you know, flying from rooftop to rooftop. And some of them are on the ground running, but. I'm guessing we just can't yeah, just... even wrap our heads oh. around trying to get all these. Right. This does like so much. All right, fireman, what do we do? I could do a, a spirit guardian and you could pick me up and fly me around and anything that within 15 feet of the guardian takes damage. Okay. I have a feeling we're maybe not supposed to try to I was gonna say, kill yeah. all these things. Like, should we just try to like proceed forward with caution to find maybe help or a source of Gotta all of this? Gotta find a government official, perhaps the fire marshal, the person in charge. I'm just thinking like, this is clearly a very big catastrophe. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know if like stopping and just fighting every single cat is the way to do Probably it? Probably not. Yeah, yeah. Should we just continue forward? Yeah. Dude, like, is there a way for us to do it without, like, drawing attention? You could try to, like, roll, like, a group stealth check. Yeah. Let's do that. Group stealth check. I got pretty good stealth. 19 for Olga. 17. 20. I have disadvantage to hold up. Oh, yeah. 17. Nice. Wow. That's so sneaky That's maybe here. our best group stealth yeah. check. That's really good. Not a single one of you failed. So, you know, you continue, you walk down the path a little ways. It's an interesting layout on this city because it seems like to your left and what you presume would be the center of the city, the elevation's higher, almost like the city's kind of built up along the shell and continues Makes you know, sense. Mm -hmm. to be uh, taller in the center. Anyway, you uh, walk for a little bit and uh, you see a smoldering sign that reads, Visitor Center, Borble Gerbil. <gasps> oh. If you peek in the window inside, you see a few shelves of inventory and a front counter, all of which are on fire. Oh, is there anybody in? Is there any water fountains? Making investigation check, uh, Matid. Once again, I need to stop asking for investigation checks. Nine. Seems like it's empty. Does anybody have positive on int? Yeah. Could you go in? Very I mean, smart. you're- you need to investigate more. Okay. <laughs> you're fire resistant, right? So if you go in, you can- I'm pretty sure he's, he's immune to it. I'm immune to fire. <laughs> no. uh, I want to look around and see if there's any water sources, and I want to see if there's any people. Water sources. Yeah, you know. Fountains. Fountains. Water hoses. Wells. None that you can see, but it is also difficult to see because of all the smoky, smoldering buildings uh, and your motion sickness. You see, I am a tiefling, though, and I have resistance. <laughs> it's a fire. It's, Chip, do you perhaps see and anybody inside of the visitor center? Let me take a look. Thank you. I'm just going to roll an investigation. Yes. You didn't ask, but I'm going to roll. 20. There nice. we go. You see what you think might be a couple of offspring, like young <gasps> Glurvians hiding behind the front counter. I kicked down the door. I go save the children. <laughs> 
Come here, my babies. Make an athletics check <laughs> to kick down the door. Arnold there. Yes, let's save all the children. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a six. <laughs> Lucky. That's a, I rolled a six. Lucky. I got to save the babies. That's a nine. <laughs> you uh, kick the door, but it, that solid Glurbian construction just won't give those hinges hold. I, no, open open door. Door. no way. I try to open the door with the knob. <laughs> Mateed reaches out and opens the door, and it <laughs> swings you. open Thank freely. <laughs> Oh, it's 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 not that intense of a fire. It's like just little, small little hot spots. Lies! The There's no such thing as not as intense of a fire. <laughs> fire spreads. That's where it gets its power. Why are you pitching for me to get damaged? What? Oh. <laughs> Are you trying to be realistic? No. Uh, yeah. After the dome <laughs> air situation, yes. we're trying to be realistic with our D and D. All right. So Matite opens the door. Yeah. yeah Matite opens the door for Chip. But I let I, I like make a motion like to let Chip in. And Chip, you spot uh, six young Glorbians <gasps> cowering behind the front counter. Hey there, kids. It's me, Chip Haney, your local volunteer firefighter. If you follow me, I will take you to safety and make sure that I can save what I can of your home. Come along now. Stop, drop, and roll. Will you help us find our progenitors? I don't know what a progenitor is, but you betcha. Okay. Okay. They get up and uh, they're all, all six of them are holding hands and they begin following you. That's adorable. That's the spirit. Go, go, go. And they uh, they run outside. All right. Marco. Marco. <laughs> Looking for I the don't progenitor. think any of them are named Marco. Okay. Wait. Hey, little children. What's a progenitor there? Our progenitors. The, the ones that create us. Yeah. They're oh. like little blobby things, so they don't have like... They might have different terminology for like parental units. Okay, I start searching room to room. You begin searching around. Make um. I'm in my element. Again, make an investigation check. Fire. <laughs> We're just doing deja vu here. It, uh, uh, Blaine's character killed a small animal, and now Blaine's character is in a fiery building trying to look around. Ten. You don't spot any other glurbs inside the building. However, you you do see some uh, pretty neat looking gloves. They're like protective elbow length orange gloves. Ooh. Do they have any like sort of benefits or fashions? Anything? I think they could maybe help protect you when you're investigating things. Oh, I grab them. I put them on. Meta game wise, they they offer resistance to acid damage. Okay. Yeah. That's handy. It's like a hazmat suit. Yeah, yeah I'll take these. Yeah. And they're bright orange. You think a firefighter would like that, right? Yeah. Uh, it might not go with my costume, but you know, whatever. Well, it's, it's very situational. Sure. Put them on yeah, when you need them. <laughs> Chip is turning into like when you are playing a video game and your character just has the best gear, but it, none of it matches. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or like me in Baldur's Gate where I've got tons of gear I can't use. Yeah, sure. But I refuse to put it in a chest. Yeah. 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 Uh, meanwhile, outside, the offspring run off in different directions, following larger glurbs, presumably their progenitors. They just, oh. was this a fool's errand? No, you got gloves. You saved them. You, saved, you also saved them. They were looking the for the progenitors, and then they just found them They were outside. scared to go outside. It was fiery. It was you scary. Did a good it's thing. fiery. It's, okay, all right, all right. Well, I come back out. You saved them, and you got an item. What else do you want? It's like a win win. Want a statue of me in the he town square. He wants a hug. The, 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 the young Glurbians all come up and hug you. Oh, that's right, children. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's All of a sudden, gross. it looks like one of those jellos with Chip <laughs> inside it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They're attacking him. <laughs> yeah, they, all, they all run away, and you're left very slimy. Okay. Have we uh, exhausted this and gone? And should move on to other parts of the city to yeah. see if we can help? Is there anywhere else? What's the next most fiery place? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going down the list. Barney, you look a little further down the way, and you see a scorched sign that reads Fun Garden. A uh, Fun Garden? Yeah, and there's a Glurbian who appears to be struggling to put out a fire there. Can I run and help? Yeah. Barney detaches from the party and runs Throw away. Throw me! It's, uh, you, can, uh, you can walk. Okay. Through, Barney. It's fun. <laughs> You got this, Barney. Have faith in yourself. He's trying to put out a fire. Like, how, what kind yeah. where, of where? You get close to the fun garden. You see it's an outdoor garden bed filled with mushrooms and fungi that are that's currently uh, set ablaze. Oh, no. There's a Glurbian wearing jelly glasses who's struggling to put out the fire in the garden. She sees you, Barney, and says, Please help me save the fun garden. Uh, okay, yes, I will. I'm looking for the correct way to save a fun garden, and I only have only one thing comes to mind. Urine. Leoman's tiny hut. <laughs> That's what comes to mind. Oh, no. Because, I mean, it will, the oxygen, it yeah, needs it will, oxygen. I, I, I control the environment. I, I can do it, but it's a, it's like my last third level spell. It doesn't seem like the best thing to do, but it's the only way I know how to put out a fire quickly. You used it so well the first time. I did. I did. <laughs> You're right. That's the only, is there any other... Is there a well nearby or any source of water? Yes, there's a well nearby, presumably, that's used to uh, water the garden. Let's talk about the logistics of this here well, okay? Because mm -hmm. we're on top of a snail, so does that well just dig into the snail's back? 
and then pulls water from the snail. You think it might be more of a rain collection kind of thing, where it's uh, mm. maybe more like a cistern where water is funneled down into it and then drawn up when it's needed. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay, continue. <laughs> There's a bucket, I assume. How, how, is this a fire that could be put out with buckets of water? Yes. Okay. It's gonna water. There, is there more than one bucket? <laughs> we'll say there's two. All right. Barney starts getting a bucket from the well and splashing it on the water. And he splashing it, it on the water. Splashing yeah. it on the fire. Okay. While also doing mage hand, that's also picking up a bucket of water. Oh. And we're doing two buckets at once. Wow. Okay. And Double I'm saying get the buckets of water. Okay. Yeah. You work feverishly with your mage hand and you manage to get the fire in the fun garden under control. And I high five my mage hand. It's very important. This fun garden is. Safely fun. And then I'm in the sign. Oh, look at you. Yeah, the sign, the little scorch marks go away and the sign writes itself. Wow. It's just fun the garden. Nature's healing. And then, and then the building right next to it that still is on fire <laughs> catches it on fire and just it all proceeds to crumble. Collapses on top yeah. of it. Thank you so much. My name's Velble. How can I possibly repay you? Maybe some free mushrooms? Uh, uh, sure. You don't have to repay me, but I, I like you. We are here. I insist. These mushrooms only survive because of you. Here, take them. She goes over and picks some mushrooms and hands them to you. Free psychedelics. Way to go, Barney. <laughs> Thank you. Don't trip. Do what do these do? They go good on a salad. These are mushrooms. Oh. They, oh, for Minecraft. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're white with black splotches. Be very careful with them. If you ingest them and can stomach them, you will grow horns that you can attack <sighs> your enemies with. Well, neato. But if you can't stomach them, there may be some bad side effects. How long do they last? The effects should last for quite a while. I eat a mushroom. Okay, make me a constitution oh, saving no. throw. She's like, careful, eat it. Oh, he's eating them. He downs he's every single right one. Now. 16. Whoa. You feel like they start really upsetting your stomach and making you feel sick. Mm. Uh, and you bend over in pain for just like a split second. Then <laughs> oh, two horns <laughs> pop out of your head. This is good Foley barb. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you've got, you've got horns on your head. Thank you. And she says, oh, you ate them? No, just one. Here, let me give you another one. Oh, thank you. This is a clover cap. Oh. Wow. If you eat this, you become extra athletic. In meta game wise, you get advantage on your next attack roll. Oh, neat. These mushrooms just turn him into chip. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Horns and athleticism. <laughs> and these ones give you a tail. And make you purple. Uh, yeah, and fire resistant. Purple gurple. Purple gurple. So I got a clover cap and two more mushrooms. Sure. Neato. And you currently have horns. Yes. Metagame wise, they deal 1d6 plus 4 piercing damage as a bonus action. Oh. Headbutt. Thank you. Stay fun. And then I I run back. Mooing. Moo. <laughs> oh my god. Barney, what are those on your head? Mad cow disease. Put them down. <laughs> Matid looks at Barney and Chip and goes, I cannot tell the two apart. It's two the same person. Which one do I shoot? <laughs> now you can drop me head first. There you go. There you go. Don't wait, 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 wait. Nothing bad could happen from that. Uh, we proceed to the next place that looks like it could use our help. Yeah, I don't know why Barney ran back because now he has to walk back past the uh, the fun garden with he, everyone. He needs his steps. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so everyone, just since you're continuing, everyone make stealth checks again just to see. Okay. Stealth have to check. Fight stealth check. Fifteen. Twenty-three. Watch out. Seventeen. All right, Wait for, for it. it. For, mess it up for us. It's gonna be Come eight. On, eight. That's still good enough. The three rolls were good enough. You all continue your stealthy crawl through Glurb. And you come across a large marquee tent with stalls inside, and the wooden poles are on fire. In each stall is a slimy, slug-looking creature roughly the size of a donkey. And there's five stalls that are currently occupied who seem to be skittish from the fire. These are, is this like, animal. Is this Blurbian livestock? Make a nature check for sure, me. Sure, that'll go well. Hey, thought there that you're doing it. No, it's an, it's an intellectual. It should be Chip mm. for 12, but he rolled a three on his last nature check. You think that these must be some kind of, like, used as, like, a beast of burden. Okay, uh, so... Milk them quickly, Matisse. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Am I wrong? You, is that where you go first? Yeah. Never what do, what do you think a beast of burden. of burden is? Oh, it's like a thing that carries weight and stuff, like a yoke and stuff. But right. also, I mean, like, milk is a burden. You got to get rid of it. That's got a cows are beast of burdens. <laughs> milk is a burden. <laughs> you know the classic saying. <laughs> Both poor mothers. <laughs> Sorry. To bring it back to the, the picture you were painting, there are four stalls? There are currently five stalls occupied. It's on fire, and these beasts of burden are seemingly trapped. 
Yeah, they're like really skittish because of the fire, and they're all like tied into their stalls. Do they have horns? No. Oh. What was the end game of that? I was gonna see if I could like coax them as one of their like. Yep, they might trust me. Monty, yep. do you want to go help with me? I, I would love to. What what should we do? I don't know, but we I think we run in, we free them from their little their cages, whatever they're in uh, the stalls. Stalls. Uh-huh. stalls. And then uh, pu- pull them out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a reasonable plan. Are the stalls like like a typical like a horse stall yeah. where there's like a gated like door? Yeah, exactly. Okay, then yeah. All right, you take the left, I'll take the right, and we should open the doors for you. Okay. Me. Each of you, just for fun, make me animal handling checks. There's a 15. 17. Oh, yeah, that's pretty oh, good. God. Despite the fact that these creatures are very skittish from the fire, they seem to implicitly trust you. You're able to open the uh, the gates and coax them out and let them free from the uh, tent that is ablaze. And do we see anything in their stalls that they left behind or like anything in this area? Make an investigation check for me, Elga. I'll do one too, just because I'm looking as well. With advantage? Yeah. Okay. That's a six. Well, I rolled a 14 twice. (laughs) There's a lot of nothing in here, you know, stalls that need to be mucked. But Elga, you find a jar that's labeled ooze ointment. Ooh, okay. And it appears to be an ointment that heals acid damage. Ooh. I feel like we're going to be running into some acid. It is. (laughs) Elga drinks it. No. What is this save point with all these health potions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I put it in my backpack. Okay. Inventory. Quick, Chip. There's so much milk here. We need help. It's a, such a burden. <laughs> we gotta milk these things quick. I put on my gloves to milk them. <laughs> <laughs> we save the beast of Baden. Uh, yeah, you've accomplished your task. All of the yeah. the creatures are safe. Okay. Matid winks at Elga. Elga blinks back with yep. both eyes. That tracks. Ding. We did it. We freed the little creatures. We've released them into the fire. <laughs> 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 uh, Chip put l- Barney in one of these dolls. <laughs> oh, put him out to pasture. Chip, Chip uh, looks around. See, if there's anybody else that needs to help. Oh, nothing that pops out, or nothing stands out, I should say, but you can continue along the path, continuing towards the center of the city. Let's do it. Come on, gang! You reach a wood plank ramp leading up into the center of town. Against fire code. <laughs> the light of day has dimmed to a red and orange sunset. At the top of the ramp is a splintered gate sprawled across the ground in a smoky heap. Past the gate, you see a large translucent mushroom the size of an oak tree glistening from the golden glow of the sunset. Flying around in the air are more of those fiery feline creatures. They seem to be circling above a tent canopy twinkling with floating lights surrounded by a crowd of glurbians and various fiery creatures. A deep blazing voice bellows from the canopy. And whoosh, a wave of fire fans out from a scorching phoenix and skirts over the top of the crowd. Phoenix. A banner overhead catches fire and falls to the ground. And as it burns up, you read, Blending Ceremony of Hexel and Ogvul. Aww. Please, there's no need for this. As I said before, no one here has heard of the mold of Underglobula or where it might be. I beg of you, have mercy on us. We are a peaceful people. You peer past the crowd and spot a somewhat familiar face, so to speak. It's a massive amorphous mound of orange that's unmistakably known as the blob. Oh. What was, wait, what did the sign say? The blending ceremony? Yeah, of... blending ceremony of Hegzel and Ogvul. Okay. It must I be some like sort a of a wedding. Yeah. yeah. Do they just oh, like become sad. one when two become one? <gasps> That'd be crazy. Like the Spice Girls, but mm-hmm. like literally? You'll have to ask them. The blending mm-hmm. ceremony. It's probably their like mating thing. Yeah. So, so the, so, the, oh God, Chris, the Phoenix is... <laughs> <laughs> ah! The Phoenix is the one that's interrogating the blob? Correct. Okay. Eddie's not around? Not that you see, no. Okay. Do we step in there? We gotta stop this. We gotta. These are bad guys. How far away is this? The thing? The, the cat? Egyptian? You got which, it. Which you is got called? It. You got it. Sphinx. 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 There. Oh, you got it. You got it. I do like the aunt, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now all Micah has to do is just get that little audio clip and use it every <laughs> single time. <laughs> yes, we attack the Phoenix. <laughs> With us cheering, too, every time he gets it right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's maybe 30 feet away. And it's big, huh? Yes. Phoenix is this campaign's prestidigitation. Guys, I think we need to talk to this Phoenix. Yeah, this Phoenix is like a huge cat-like creature made purely of fiery feathers with four fiery paws, a blazing tail, two burning wings, and a flaming feline face with scorching eyes. Ooh. That's cool. I'm sure you remember from our, one of our previous episodes, yeah. the phoenix is the ruler of Pyroa, which is the elemental dimension of fire. Yeah, of course. 
<laughs> That's the refresher. <laughs> is it a humanoid? Does it count as... No, it's cat. Yep. It's cat it bird. It's a, it's a humanoid. It's cat bird. Mm -hmm. It's a specifically Taylor Swift from the movie Cats. Yeah. yeah. Um. With wings. <laughs> with wings. Should we go talk to him? Or her? Or what? I'm torn between uh, wanting to socialize with it and wanting to attack it with stealth. Can we Those continue to watch from afar and see what happens? Mm -hmm. Sure, if you want. Gus is like, no, I'm out of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> the phoenix again says, The moon of Unglobula, bring it to me. Or I will destroy all of them and its citizens. The mold? Mold. Mold. Of underglobula. That is Matite's worst nightmare. Not mold. It's mold. mold. Oh. Elga, make a intelligence check for me. Oh, but I appreciate no. I'm sorry, not intelligence. I uh, appreciate wisdom. you were listening, Chris. Wisdom check? Yes. 16? Underglobula sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. You think you found something that had underglobula on it. Isn't that the thing that's just in the back of your throat? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uvula? Maybe in the library you found something? I do remember, right? And my memory tells me. If you do a search on your inventory and type underglobula, I think it'll pop up. Sky chart labeled gold of underglobula. Uh, gl <laughs> you got oh, it. God. You got it. <laughs> oh, no. Hi, welcome to Mudmouth, the, uh, the <laughs> podcast. I have the sky chart labeled gold of underglobula. Got it. Is this what Ooh, I am remembering? Yeah. But this is, was I supposed to write mold or did I write gold as, as the appropriate thing? You think you wrote it correctly. Okay. Okay. And the upper half was ripped off. Yeah. Wait, when, where did we get this? This was probably in the library. Probably the library. This was from the library. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I feel okay. Like we should just really type it, chi chime up, chime, chime, I'm at it. Words. <laughs> glop, 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 glop. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Phoenix! <laughs> you leave them alone! They're in a ceremony! Rude! <laughs> you- you talk to us! The Phoenix drops the blob to the ground, and another couple of glurbs run out and seem to attend to the blob as the Phoenix turns its attention to you. Yeah? <laughs> it's me! Our very stealthy I, rogue. I'm the problem. <laughs> I am the problem! Okay. In like a velvety voice, the Phoenix asks, And you are. And I say in a sandpapery voice, Chip Haney! Haney! And I'm here to protect the people of. Glurb? Yep. Glurb! <laughs> Have you by any chance seen an upper half of a sky chart? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> and the, 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 this phoenix asks you, Chip. So you are going to bring me the mood of Underglobula to protect the citizens? Yeah, maybe, but you gotta chill out, dude, because, like, you're lighting this place on fire, and that is, like, so rude. What the- what? You're looking for gold? Mold of Underglobula. Mold? And that's- that's worth killing people for? Let's calm it down. Bring it down a notch, Phoenix. Gosh. Gosh. All that matters is the retrieval of the mood of Underglobula. Everyone will be spared if you can provide this for me. Okay. okay. You could have just said that from the beginning. And what do you want it for? Yeah, what's, what's the mold? I want it so that I don't have to kill everyone here. It saves everyone in this town. If we retrieve this uh, mood for you, will you uh, disperse from the city and leave everyone alone? Of course. In fact, I'm so forgiving, I'll give you until next sunset to retrieve it and bring it to me. Well, why don't you put out these fires that you started while you're at it? The Glorbians can take care of that. You I don't think stinks. they can, really. Yeah. They're struggling and we're pretty hardcore with them. Yeah. If you put out the fires, we'll get you this mold. You bring me the mold, and everyone can be saved. And with that, the phoenix takes to the air. Oh, that guy's a jerk. Let's go tend to the to the guy, the glob. Yeah, can we go check blob. on the blob? Blob. Yeah, you run up to the blob, and a couple of other glurbs are attending to the blob. The blob, you know, addresses them and says, Oh, don't worry, Hexel. I'm fine. You go look over Ogville. These, those are the two that were having their ceremony. Yeah. Um, blending ceremony. Oh, and the blob was probably there to just be the... Officiant. Officiant, yeah. Or just a celebrity guest. The blob uh, <laughs> sees you all approaching and says, <sighs> Thank you for running this phoenix off. No problem. We're on the case. 
What is this mood that yeah. he keeps referring to? What did we promise a WMD to an already <laughs> extremely powerful evil villain? Yeah. We don't know. We have no idea what the mood of Underglobula is. We don't know why this phoenix came here looking for it. We glurbs don't like to get involved with the outside world. We just want to keep to ourselves and our nomadic lifestyle. When, you know, the blob is saying this, Hexel seems to kind of, like, scoff. <laughs> it seems like Hexel maybe disagrees. Hexel, counterpoint? Hexel chimes in and says, I think we need to be more involved in the world. Mm, isolationism versus... Oh, so yeah. it's, it's a Wakanda problem. It's a reward, exactly. Unlike my progenitor, the blob, oh. oh, I think that our place in the world needs to be defended. Oh. Uh, it is very common to not uh, agree with the boomer parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Opinions tend to be outdated. Yeah. That's what the shell's for. Mm. What is under globula? Is that a location? I don't know. You don't know anything about any of these words? No, not at all. There's got to be a reason that the Phoenix came to you. I mean, it's got to be around here, probably. Is there perhaps an elder or historian in this place that will be able to help us with this? Yeah, take us to an historian. (laughs) Oh, man, that guy on the ship. (laughs) Kurg? Kurg. Yurk. So, Elga, you still have the sky chart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But does any, have you told any of your party about it, or are you the only one who remembers about it right now, Elga? I think I'm probably the only one who remembers, but okay. could I pull it out? Yeah. And show everyone? So, I, the Phoenix mentioned something about the mood of Underglobula, but I found this sky chart that's labeled gold of Underglobula, but only the lower half. Mm. Hmm. Do you guys, and she holds it up for them. And spins it around to everyone. Does this look familiar to any of you? Show and tell. Hexel says, Perhaps we can ride some slurgs out to the fields below and wait for the stars to come out. Then we can see if we can identify it. Mm. Oh. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Was it sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Next sunset. Okay. And I have a question. Whenever we were in the library, didn't we see the whole stars thing at some point? Correct. It was like that silver, the brass rings, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. It was those more like planetary alignments. Because I saw, I know Barney saw it. Can I make like a history check or something to see if I re- recognize anything that's not? Well, it wasn't like a chart of oh. stars, though. That's the thing. It's fine. So it sounds like we're going to need to wait till nightfall, and then we can glean some more information as to where to find this thing. Correct. And it is already sunset. Oh, lovely. I guess it's time to go. <laughs> I'll go with you. Perfect. Wait. What, what, sorry, what did we walk you? What did, what was this ceremony? Were you guys, were you guys getting hitched? Yes, it was supposed to be the blending ceremony between me and my fiance, Ogvil. Ogvil, how are you doing? Could be worse, could be better. Wow, that's a real good approach to life, you know? Ogvil seems super chill. Like, <laughs> like Ogvil seems nonplussed about everything that's going on. Wow. Do you guys still want to have your blending ceremony so we could watch? Oh, we'll still absolutely have our blending day. I think we should wait until we get this Phoenix issue taken care of. The city's not, city's on, not fire. on fire. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you can't expect everything to go perfect on your blending day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, things go wrong. It's fine. The important thing is we're going to be together. That's beautiful. Wow. You know, this reminds me of my wife, Carol. I was waiting for it. I was thinking about our blending day. (laughs) (laughs) And it was beautiful. (laughs) My parents were there. Oh, my mama, she was crying. And, uh, oh, that night, love, like you wouldn't believe. (laughs) Was that the first time you blended? Two bodies becoming one blended ooze. Matite puts their hands over Elga's ears. (laughs) (laughs) Elga's already doing it. (laughs) Oh, I miss my wife, Carol. So we can get little, what are those? Slurgs. Cre- slurg to the slurgs. <laughs> to the slurgs. That should allow us to get there fairly quickly. I've never taken a slurg before. It's my favorite soda. I'll tell you more about my uh, my blending day on the way. Sounds wonderful. Oh, yeah. Hexel leads you all back to that large tent where you all uh, oh, free feed slurgs. the beasts of burden. And the slurgs are out milling about. Oh, thank goodness they're all okay. I pet one. And look. There's five of them. (gasps) It's like Princess Bride. I found these horses. (laughs) You all mount the slurgs, and it seems like they move really slowly at first. (laughs) This is the worst. (laughs) But once they get on, like, slimy and wet surfaces, they begin to move super surprisingly quickly. That's a fun game We're back to never-ending story with the racing snail. Yeah! Wait to hear the foley that uh, oh, come on. Micah no, does no. for this episode. It's just gonna be mushy. It's gonna literally be your brother playing with a like thing of jello. I love something. it. There certainly has been folly in this. <laughs> nice. So you all travel back down the slimy side of Glurb and eventually reach the grassy knolls and fields of fungi once more. 
if you want to at this point, you all can actually take a short rest. Oh. Can I ask the name of my uh, blurg? Slurg? Should, yeah, slurg. Ask, ask the slurg what its name What's is. What's your name? <laughs> Make an animal handling check. Okay, easy. Eight. I'll, I'll provide the voice for this character if you'd like. Thank us. you. Please do. I was uh, I was going to, but you do it. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah, that's his name. That's actually really good. <laughs> Thanks. Its name is Brag. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we do a short rest? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pass on the short rest because I have temp HP and okay. I want to keep it. I'm going to take a short rest just to get some stuff back and do my initiative thing. Got to get your tent okay. back, dude. After an hour of waiting, you glance up to see a pitch black blanket of night sky speckled with stars. Hexel looks up and says, I never tire of seeing that. There's so many of them. It reminds me that for all of Glurb's traveling, there's so much of this world I haven't seen. Mm. Anyway, we should probably take a look at that sky chart now. Perhaps we can find a clue as to what or where this mold is. Okay, here it is. Yeah, everyone make a survival check to try to look at the sky chart. 18. 21. 12. It was a five. For a bird, you don't see sky very well. I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I love how much you could just use that excuse whenever they want. Yeah. Pull it out. If I fail a survival check, I died. Elga, you instantly, maybe it's because you've been holding the sky chart, but you instantly pick out five stars in the sky that are an exact match to the sky chart. <gasps> And as you start pointing them out to everyone, each shines brightly for a moment and then just as quickly disappears. Mm. And one by one, each celestial body brightens and vanishes until there's an outline left in the negative space that looks like a diamond. Uh. And foosh, bright specks start appearing in the grassy ground below you, surrounding you on every side with spots of light until they all form a constellation in the soil, a jewel. In the center of the consolation, a hole opens up in the ground near your feet. <laughs> The pit plumbs deeper than the eye can see into a dark void blacker than the night sky. And Hegzel asks, So, who wants to go first? I think this is the underglobula. Mm. Well, we're going to have to find out in the next episode oh. of Tales from the Stinky oh. Dragon. What? The stars at night are Our big and bright. bright. Deep in the heart of Glurb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. And don't forget Dragon. to listen to Second Win, where we'll talk about this episode and all the behind the scenes of it for first members. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, a bunch of new merch. You can find all of that at stinkydragonpod.com. <gasps> what? Wow. We got our own oh. website URL. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Micah Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sonnier. Did you know you can directly support this show and interact with us by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. Cool, talented, amazing first stinkers like Rain and Fire, Phoenix Flare, Unipants, Easy Possum 98, or Easy Opossum 98, and Sissy Law. They're directly supporting this show and they get more great content like Second Wind. They can interact with us on our subscriber-only Discord channels and more. Again, find out more information at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. This week's arrow question was submitted by Caro on Discord. Here's a quick shout out to folks that interacted with us on social media recently. Here's some NPCs named after them in this episode. Captain Kirk the Glurbian, named after at Captain Kirk 030 on Twitter. Valble, the Mushroom Gardener, named after user ValuableMath9969 on Reddit. Hexel, the Blob's Offspring, named after at Eggs, the World Destroyer on Instagram. Ogvol the Attachment is named after at Nikki Agdi on Twitter. Also want to give a special thanks to some friends who provided VO for characters in this episode. Captain Kirk, voiced by Ben Ernst, at Halcyon underscore Ben. Valble, the Mushroom Gardener, voiced by Chelsea Atkinson, at Chattykinson. The Phoenix, voiced by Christian Young, at X Chin Young. The Blob, voiced by Kyla Cook, at Defined by Kai. Hexel, the Blob's Offspring, voiced by Elise Willems, at Elise Willems and Ogvold the Attachment voiced by James Willems at James Willems. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Metagaming, uh, Blaine is into collecting cassette tapes and sometimes the... His chat tapes really suck. <laughs> so I'm accustomed to this.